Right, so let's get into the word today. I want us to, so this morning we're talking about essentials for securing our financial future. And what I want us to see in the Bible today is very simple. Uh, this is all I want us to see. What I want to see from the Bible is very simple. Um, I want us to see the story of a man in the Bible that literally had nothing and he became very rich. And this is why I'm sharing this this morning. Because a lot of Christians have that deep sense of disappointment that God has failed them, God has abandoned them, and most of them, when they say these things, it's because most of the time, in a certain area of their finances, they experience a failure. So there are Christians that have prayed a lot, but yet they cannot fund their lifestyle. There are people that are so into debt. There are people that will literally need to beg to feed. So all this happens all the time. And people are wondering, but I'm really praying, which is the word, I'm really praying, how come nothing is changing for me financially? There are people that are even doing so well, but they're wondering, how can I scale my business? How can I improve my business? How can I grow my business? How can I make my business bigger? And that's what I want to answer from the Bible. Because the thing is this, you can be praying for something, but if you don't know how God does it, it will be a waste of time. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. This is a good thing. This is a good way to start. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And we'll go to John chapter 28. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 12. Verse 15. The Bible says, The labor of the foolish man wearies him. So if this foolish person is taking time to pray... He says, his prayer will be exhausting. If this foolish person is taking time to do things, it will be exhausting. Why? The Bible says there is a reason. Because he does not know how to go to the city. One of the things we must realize is this. One of the things that God does to answer our prayer is to begin to unfold to us a path that will help us get into the city. That's one of the ways that God answers our prayers. So as we speak about financial future, last week, we spoke about basic money management skills. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 28. And I'm going to come back to it gradually. 28. In verse 1. So if you know the story of Jacob, Jacob took the blessing of his brother Esau. And Jacob had to leave everything and go and start a new lifestyle. So Jacob went from the child of the rich father and a guy that is doing so well because he had done so well where he was, he moved to a place where he wasn't doing well again. So the question is this. If you're in a place in your life where you're not doing well financially, or maybe you're not doing well when it comes to your job, and you have bills you're not able to pay, this message will speak to you categorically. Many of you have been praying and say, I need fun to start my business, I need fun to expand my business, I need this to do this. This message will give you a pointer on the pattern we see in the scripture, the Bible says, the book of Romans, it says all those things are written for our example. It says when we see these things, we can see a pattern there. So, Genesis chapter 20 verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. So, first thing. The first thing that Isaac, the first thing that Jacob had, Jacob did not leave his father with money. All that Jacob left his father was, was with blessing. That's all he left the father with. That's all he left the father with. He said, and Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. And let me say something quickly here. Just in the previous verse, chapter 27, just because of time, I wish I could, I could go there. One of the powerful things in that verse is this. When Jacob came to get the blessing, the Bible says, Isaac said, the voice is the voice of what? Jacob. But it feels like what? Esau. Because Jacob had come to get the blessing, but what Jacob did was to take an animal skin and peel it off. He put on the skin because Esau was what? Was hairy. Esau was what? Was hairy. So when Isaac was doubting if it was Jacob or Esau, he said, come closer. When he came closer, he touched him. He said, ah, the skin, the touch is the touch of who? Of Esau. But the voice is the voice of Jacob. He said, but since it feels like Esau, take the blessing. And that scripture is a very powerful principle. What is it? That scripture is a picture of Jesus Christ. What does it tell us? Listen to me. Oh, this is powerful. Well, the, that's one of the powerful, this is a powerful revelation of prayer. In the place of prayer, when we come into Christ, Bible says, if any man be in Christ, we come into Christ. 
Listen to me. When we come into Christ, it's our voice that is praying, for it's Jesus that God is hearing. Did you get that? So, the same way, the same way, watch this now, the same way that Isaac did not respond to Jacob because of what he heard, he responded as if it was Esau. When we go to God in prayer and say we pray in the name of Jesus, it is our voice, but it is the body of Jesus Christ is touching. Because we come with the garment of righteousness. Are you hearing me? That, that's what we put on. We put on what? The garment of righteousness. That is what it means to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You put on the garment of Jesus Christ. Hey! This is so powerful. So, someone says, Hi, ah, you're so confident of prayer. The reason I'm confident in my prayer is this. Because when I pray in the name of Jesus, I know it's done. I, I know it's done. I believe it's done. So I said, it's my voice. But it's the what? It's the body of Jesus. That's why, that's why we don't pray in our names. We come on his authority. That's what it means to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We come on his authority. Glory to God. Okay, so let's jump back to verse 28. That's just by the, by the way in the teaching. So... Um, Isaac eventually told um, his son, he says, please, you know, go to Laban's area, get a wife from there. What I want to bring out is this, which is verse 28. So, when Isaac sent out Jacob, Jacob went without penny. And when he went without penny, he had to start from scratch again. Many of you are saying that, you know, all these things that teach about finances. If this pastor understands where I am financially, I don't even have money to pay house rent. I don't even have money to take care of myself. Uh, what would it, they say seven cups. So, let, let's come to the cups. So, last week we spoke about seven cups. We spoke about, number one, the cup of what? Um, imagine, um, operation and needs. Number two is the cup of what? Of what? Of benevolence. The third one is the cup of what? Emergency. The fourth one is the cup of investment. The fifth one is the cup of... Project, the seven, sixth one is a cup of what? What? Development, and the seventh one is a cup of leisure. Someone says, you speak about all those cups. The problem is that if you earn what I earn, it's not even enough for one cup. So what we want to do today is this. This is what I want to teach today. If you're not earning enough, if the finance is not enough, so it's not just, so money management can be a problem, but some people really have an earning problem. What? will you do categorically? What will you do categorically? So, we see the story of this man called Jacob. Jacob moved because of circumstances, lost everything. And when he did, he moved to the land of Laban. Let's look. So, we've seen um, chapter 29, now verse 1. And when Jacob went on to his journey, he came to the land of the east, and he looked a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of the well, the, the, they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And hither all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's land in its place. Verse 4. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence shall be ye? So, my brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And they said, Know ye Laban, the son of Nabor? And they said, We know him. And they said, is all well with him? And he said, he's well. Behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with a sheep. And lo, it is high day. Neither, and he said, lo, it is a high day. Neither is it time that the sheep should be gathered. What are ye the sheep? Go and feed them. And they said, we cannot until all the flocks be gathered, until they roam the stone from the world's mouth. Then we will water the sheep. Well, this is it. So if you notice in this story, Jacob left his father broke. He didn't have money. And as soon as he left, his father broke. He got into the place of Laban. But the, if you not, if you, he got there, the key thing is this. In chapter 29, Jacob was that broke person. By chapter 31, Jacob was that rich person. Let's read chapter 31. We want to know what happened between chapter 29 and chapter what? 31. So if you can see what happened with Jacob, there may be something we can learn. Chapter 31. The Bible says this. And when he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob had taken all our masters. That means Jacob has made money from our master. He became rich. Which was our, and, and of that, which was our master. Watch this. As he begotten all his glory. Jacob had gotten to a point where they said that Jacob had glory. 
it means he was successful praise god people are going to say about you that you have glory praise god listen it's one thing to have glory is another thing where others who can see your glory people are going to say that there's something about that girl he has glory praise god say amen somebody so did you notice something in chapter 29 jacob was a hustler in chapter 31 jacob was a very successful person what happened and the first thing you will notice is this when jacob got to the place of laban how did he make his first money the first thing is this and i want to understand the pattern in which god helps us to make money and increase income let me read some scripture by the side um let's start from ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 let's start three scriptures by the side ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 because I don't know if you've been like me, when I heard the teaching on finances, when I was growing up as a Christian, all I basically had was to give and to begin to confess. So I kept on giving. I can't, Pastor, you can tell you, we had all these confessions we wrote and we're confessing every day. In fact, there was a time they said we should confess it maybe 10 times or 12 times a day. We confessed and confessed and confessed and confessed. We saw some increase, but not what we wanted to see. Praise the Lord. All right, so verse 28. See what the Bible says here. Um, Oh, wow. Verse 27. This is very powerful. Neither give place to Satan. (laughs) I love this. It says, neither give place to Satan. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him walk with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed it. Meaning this. There's a way to look at it. Number one, by not having work, you will give place to Satan. Is people that don't have cork that are cutting soap. Praise the Lord. So it's when you don't have work that a lot of things will look attractive to you. But look at the next thing it said here. It says, how do you not steal no more? It says, it's not by making up your mind I will not steal again. It said, if you don't have what provides your basic necessities, you will end up stealing. So he didn't say, if you don't have, to, if you don't have beg. He didn't say pray. What he says is that if you don't have Find work to do and work will bring you income. Psalm 1. Let's look at Psalm 1. And I'll look at Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Praise the Lord. So the question is that how does God bless his people and increase them financially? Psalm 1 in verse, Psalm 1 in verse, um, verse 3. The Bible says that he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season and his leaves does not wither. The last verse says, it says, and whatsoever what? Can you not hear you? Whatsoever I do what? He said, whatsoever he doeth shall what prosper. The blessing of God is attached to what you do. That's what I'm going to. So, if you are not doing something, there is no way that is an expression. There's no vehicle that the blessing of God can come through. So, Imagine there's no vehicle that the blessing of God can come through. So we notice on the Bible that the blessing of God comes upon the work of our hands. So how did God, how did God bless Le- um, Jacob? When Jacob got to Laban, you know what did J- Jacob do to Laban? Laban, you know what he did? The first thing he did was this. He chose to work for him as someone that had experience in animal husbandry. That's the first step. The skill he has was what? Animal husbandry. So let me bring my car. My, 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 can you bring this thing forward for me? Yeah, just bring it forward for me quickly. Just bring it somewhere close here. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So this is, look at the top. I don't know if you can see the top. I don't know if the camera can get the top. Can the camera get the top? Okay. It's difficult for them to get the top. Okay, maybe, it's, maybe they can get the top. But if you can get the top, you can see. The top is financial security. That's where we all want to go to. But where do you start from? I, I just want to be up close to help us with the, with the, with the, with the range. You know, wh- where do we start from? So, we want to get to the top. The first place is this. How does God bless you financially? He doesn't come and give you a car must go. He can do that sometime, but that's not what he starts. What he does, he starts you out by what? High income skills. That's what I'm going to. It starts you out to what? I income skills. See, what are I income skills? This is the problem. Most people want to make money, but they don't understand that money is an exchange. For me to make money, I need to have skill. For me to make money, I need to have skill. So the first thing here is what? I income skill. Did you notice I didn't say a job? Did you notice I didn't say skill? 
They are high income skill. What, how do you define a high income skill? A high income skill is a skill you have and you will make about 20 to 40 million naira per annum. There are high income jobs, but high income jobs are not in the high income skill. High income jobs are jobs that you have. But the thing with high income jobs, you make a lot of money, but the thing with the job is that they determine what's your worth, they determine what they'll pay you. But the way skill is, is that your skill determines how much you're paid. So, when Jacob got to the house of Laban, he didn't go to beg. Many of you, when you have a need, your strategy to get money is to beg. No, begging is not a good financial strategy. You must bring forth skill. When he got to the house of Laban, he, they were hand, animal husbandry. He could easily fit in. Why? Because he had skill in what? Animal husbandry. High income skill. What are, let, me give you, let me give you examples of high income skill. So number one, a good high income skill is that some people are doing, um, uh, one, of my, one of the brothers in church told me, he runs an oil and gas, and he told me that they had to bring in those boys from the U.S. I said, what do you, what do you? he said, they're just 18, 19. He said, they understand, he said, it's, a, it's a, just young boys that understand robot, robotics. I, I said, what do they do? He said, because they play games a lot, they know how to move like robots. He said, because in the deep sea, our pipes are buried inside. And, you know, when the pipe is broken, no human being can dive inside. So we use, we send in all those robots inside and they can use a screen and control the robot to fix the leaks and fix the pipes. I said, how much do you pay them? He said, sometimes we bring them to Nigeria. Total bill for a 10 days job can be $30,000. Can you believe that? That's a high income skill. Because a lot of you, but, but the thing with that, in this part of the world, when people want to start something, they always look for low-income skill or low-income jobs. You need to think about high-income skill. Let me and what if you have a skill, you need to train your skill to become high-income. What is a high-income skill? Let me give you an example. Do you know that a lot of people say that I'm, I can't make money. You can easily make money. Just learn how to drive. If you're a driver, you can make between forty to eighty thousand, depending on where you're driving. But because you've learned how to drive. But guess what? If you now, with your driving, learn security driving, you'll be surprised you will move from earning forty to 80,000 air to earning 300,000 air because you'll be driving specific type of people and specific type of things because of what? High income skill. So a lot of us are praying here today and say, Father, bless me. And God is saying, I want to bless you, but I want you to learn high income skill. What did God say? God says, I will bless the work of your hand. The work of your hand is the skill. God says, give me this skill. Let me put a blessing on it. And that, that's the problem. A lot of people don't have skill. People just come again. Rama, kuba, he, fire, kata, fire, fire. See, the, 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 the devil is not your problem. As a matter of fact, as soon as you prayed, an angel brought the blessing. But, but God says, I will bless what? The works of your hand. So he brings the blessing. There's no work in your hand. What happened? The blessing is suspended. Why is your blessing suspended? Because the blessing only rests upon the works of your hand. But you don't have works of your hand. And God said, get the work so that I can put blessing on it. Where you start from is high income skill. You need to ask yourself, what are the high income skills? Do you know, I know public speakers that earn $20,000 every time they speak. Because they've marked the skill. I know people that are so good in marketing. You, will, you know, people want to sell property. If you bring it to them, if you bring it to them, they just know how to, within one month, they can sell up the property. And they will tell you, okay, how many flats do you want to sell? Um, I want 10 flats. How much is this flat? Each flat is 70 million. That's 700. Okay, you know what? I will sell the 70 flats. I will take 10%. Guess what? They will take 10% from the buyer. Take 10% from the seller. They will sell it in one month. They will be 40 millionaire. Why? Because it's told, say, ah, that guy is good in marketing. Mm -mm. Even if you are good in something, training makes you better. It's high income skill. It's high income skill. So all this prayer you are praying should be leading you to what? Developing and identifying an high income skill. The problem with doing business in our country is this. When people want to do something, they want to do a business. What do they want to do? Buy and sell it. It's so basic. You, you want to buy clothes. It's so basic. It's so basic that sometimes to differentiate, to expand and make money in that space is so difficult. But, and that's why I told you, and that's why I went back to the cops. Because one of the cops you must have is a cop of development. I have to give myself to development. 
There's their, their skills. I need to do what I'm doing. There are ways I must be thinking. There are ways I must be speaking. So, if you're going to, if your financial future, the first ladder you will climb, you have to climb this ladder. The first ladder is what? It's the ladder of what? Our income skills. So, question. Do you have skill at all? Number two. Are the skills high income or low income? That's the truth. Do you have skill at all? Are the skills high income or low income? Then ask yourself, what are, for example, do you know some people right now, they have trading skill. When I say trading, not buying and selling, forex. People are trading forex. You know, I know it's illegal in some country right now, but some people are trading cryptocurrency. And some people are making huge money from that. But it's a skill because, you know, you could put your money in forex trading or crypto if it's allowed where you are legally and you lose all the money. It's a skill. And you see young boys, I've seen boys at 21, 22, they've cashed out 500 million, 200 million. And you, wonder, and you are angry. You say, ah, that's my boy. How do you make the money? Listen, money does not respond to age. Neither does it respond. It's high income skill. You can, because you are here right now. You say, Father, why have you failed me? God says, I want to bless the work of your hand. What work is in your hand? He said, Father, bless me. He said, give me the work. He said, Father, bless me. He said, give me the work. He said, Father, bless me. You now be speaking it all. As you're speaking it you are reporting yourself to God. As you're speaking it all, you know what you're saying? Father, I've come again. Oh, this stupid child of yours. I will not hear. I'll be fasting and praying. Eagerly, he's going to go and get high income skill. You'll be reporting yourself to God. Some of the time you used to watch Telemundo, African Magic, on Instagram, you can use it to get high income skill. Do you know some people can make a lot of money from social media? I know people that make close to 5 million Nigerian Naira from social media every single month. I heard that if you get numbers up to a certain amount on YouTube or Instagram, they will start paying you back. And one of, one of the guys I know said he made, I think, $1.2, no, no, $800,000 because he had so many views. But what do you do on social media? You show us food. See, the point, but the reason why is it for it to become a skill, you must learn. You know, there's a, the IT has a lot of space for skill. That's UI or UE or what? You what? UI, US. I was told that if you have that skill, you can get, you can get skill. They pay you $10,000, pay you $20,000, they pay you all those kind of things. Just imagine if your life has that kind of money. Skill. So today, one of the things, so when you're praying, don't just say, God bless me. God should begin to direct you, open up your mind to high income skill. So why, so the first level is high income skill. Why is it? Remember this is a ladder. Why are we starting here? Because the next level to increase your finances is this. So when you have high income skill, watch this now. Anybody can make money from a job. But if you want to be faster than your, every other person, high income skill. Because what other people make in five years? You're making what? One year. Why did I say skill or not job? Because job, they determine to increase your money. When it's a skill, you can enhance yourself, improve your value, and you will deliver more and demand for more. That's the difference between a job and a skill. Because job, your value is not dependent by output. It's dependent by ranks and all of those kind of things most of the time. But skill, the more you improve the skill, the better. When you move to what's the next level, is to what? Is to start what? Scalable business. Start what? Scalable business. What's scalable business? Did you notice? So the moment that Jacob got in, the first thing was he got a job. They got a job. He says, I will serve you for this. He got a job. The next thing was that he says, don't, don't, don't pay me again. Give me animals. Let me also set to myself. Is that what scalable businesses? What's a scalable business? Ever look up here. A scalable business is a business you can start without having to invest so much money on infrastructure. That's a scalable business. So someone say the restaurant is a scalable business. It's not. Because you may need a hundred million to start a restaurant. You will need another hundred million to start another restaurant. No. That's difficult. 
A scalable business can be something like software. It doesn't matter. You can sell so many of it without increasing what you do. A scalable business can be website design templates. So you have a template for this, for this, for this, for this. For example, this first service, as I was teaching, it was streamed to all the sort of services. We just scale technology. So as I was preaching here, people are watching online. As I'm watching online, people are also, what, are also watching other centers. It was scaled that way. So the question is, that, are you, start a scalable business. Most people start businesses that cannot scale. The challenge is this. The more people your business serve, the more money you make. The less people your business serve, the less money you make. So you need a business that can serve more people. But keep, listen, if you have to keep doing a lot to serve more people, guess what will happen? You will not meet up because you will start failing. That's the problem with the fashion industry in Nigeria because we make, we, we, the fashion industry makes to fit fashion. Nobody can scale that way. The people that make money from fashion most of the time, they make it a mass. They make it mass. So you need to think. So this is what this mistake most people make. Most people that want to make money start from starting a business. They jump high income scale. The problem is this. When you start from having a business, you will never have the money to start your business. You know why? It's the high income scale, the money you make from the high income scale that you used to what? Start the business. It's the experience you have from having a high income scale that helps you with your business. Once you miss that ladder, most of the time you climb and you what? You fall back again. And you know why people on this level are in trouble? All of you that are doing a scalable business, you know why are in trouble? Because they have a scalable business, they don't have an income scale. So this business provides them money, but guess what? That's also where they eat. So the business needs money to grow. They need money to survive. So they eat from the business. They feed from the business. The business cannot scale because the business needs to grow. So just think of Jacob. Jacob has two lambs. And he's hungry. He will kill one lamp and eat it. That he will, he will kill it until he kills everything. That's how many of you said, I don't know if it was that attacked my business. It was not Satan. You were, the one, you were the one that was eating it. You took out, the business is worth 3 million. You took out house rent, 500,000. You went to Dubai, 600,000. You did birthday for your girlfriend, 400,000. I want to ask you, what will happen to the business? Somebody say Hallelujah. And, and I'm really saying this because this is where a lot of Christians have challenges. This is where we have challenges, really, literally. Because we keep, and, and this is the thing. You say, God is not faithful. But this is the thing. You need to start from high income skill. And everybody, all of you online, write it, write it, write it. Write it on your notes. When I go home today, I'm going to research what can I do, what skill can I have, and make 20 million from 30 million Nigerian money, or probably 100,000 US dollars. What skill can I have? And start training yourself in that area. Then secondly, think of this. Scalable businesses. For example, what's a scalable business? I can have a vending machine. You never have a vending machine. I don't have to be there for it to work. I just have to make sure that it's secure where it is. If I make, if let's imagine, I make maybe 100,000 for a vending machine every month. If I have 10 vending machines, how much do I make? One, one million naira. And the vending machines work either I'm there or not. The business is scalable, but I don't have to put too much infrastructure. All I need is a vending machine. But most of us do businesses that need a lot of money. And this is the thing with money. People love to loan money to people that have money. Praise God. That's why they're not loaning you money yet. They will loan you very soon. But they want to make sure that the reason why is that when you have money, you know how hard money is to make. So you will, you will keep the money very well. Glory to God. And so you go from, so who's going to climb for me now? Who is there? Come, come and me hold. Someone should come and me hold. Yes. Can me, you, you come and, I need someone that is thick to hold it, not someone that, you know. The, this, yeah, the lady, come, yeah. Yes, please come. Yeah, the two of you come and hold them, hold the stand, yeah. Hold, hold it over there. Yeah, because she's going to climb, she's climbing, you need to climb to your financial future. <laughs> climb, my sister, climb. Yes, climb, just climb, yeah. Uh-huh. Just keep climbing. Uh-huh. Hold on, just stay like that. Just stay. So, you know the thing? She's on the scalable business right now. This is where some people are. You want to start from halfway. And that's why you keep looking for capital for one year, two years. Meanwhile, you can learn a skill, use your skill, raise capital from the skill, and move to level two. 
Please go down. Thank you. I can hold you. Don't worry. Thank you. And the third, the third thing is what? High you, you can, thank you. Thank you. And the third one is what? High yield investments. So in recent times, there's a tumble in the crypto market. Praise God. <laughs> All I hear is buy the deep, buy the deep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, the people that will suffer the most are the people that are doing high yielding investments, but they don't have incomes and scalability. You know why? People that already have money, if you like the thing too deep, they need to go back up again. So they'll be rest assured. But people that eat from it, they have to sell what to eat tomorrow. So they will sell at a loss because they must eat. And the reason why is that it's in steps. One step one and step two is not secured. Step three becomes very difficult to do. Glory to God. Okay, so let's begin to round up our teaching. So this is what I wanted to see today. So what is your prayer? One of the things you want to do is that you want to direct your prayer towards this thing. You want to direct your prayer. I say, Lord, begin to teach me. Because the easiest thing we do as Nigerians is that every time we want to say, let me sell clothes, let me sell food. We always do what other people are doing. And that's why we do it for one month. It can scale because there's no opportunity there. So the question, because most of us, when you want to do something, you don't say that, what skill can, do, do I like, can I learn, that can help me do so well? There's a guy in this church, he came to me, he said, very, very strong guy. He said, I don't have money. I said, can, can you drive? He said, no. I said, take 25000 I'll go to a driving school. When I go to the come back, I'll give you a driving job. If I give you a driving job, you make 60000 naira. That's also our problem. He said, oh, wow, I didn't know that. But I could solve that problem because it was skill. That's not even a high income skill. So this is what you need to pray for. And this is why you're praying. To, this is why you need to scatter in prayer. Don't scatter in prayer. Say, Father, bless me, bless me. You, need, you, are, you attend an intelligent church, sir. When you attend the church that teaches faith, teaches the word, you attend, you, you should know how to pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know how to pray. You go to God in prayer and say, Father, I'm asking, guide me in my decision for a high income skill. And what, this is where prayer comes in. There are skills that will be appealing tomorrow. We don't see today. God will say, enter there. Same thing. You, scalable business. Same thing. High yield investments. So this is essentials. Last week I explained to you that there are three things when it comes to finance. Number one, there is the mindset. And next week we'll talk about, talk about mindset. Number two, there is what? The money skill. And that's what we talk about money management skill. This money making skill. And the third one now is what? It's a grace. Let me read something to you quickly. Let's read Genesis chapter 27. Wow. Genesis 27. Oh, wow. Huh. Genesis 27, verse 1. Um, I, I want to jump, jump, verse 1. And it came to pass when Isaac was old, and his eyes was dim, and he could not see. He called Esau, his eldest son, and said to him, My son! And he said, Behold, here am I. He says, Behold, he said, Behold, now I'm old, and I know, the day, and I know not the day of my death. Now, therefore, I pray you, I want to talk about grace. Now, I want to talk about grace. He said, I pray you, take the weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. He says, verse 4, make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that my soul may bless thee, that I may die. See, Isaac was so intentional. Isaac said, although you have the skill, Isaac said, Although you have the skill, although you have the mindset, he said, I also want to make sure you have what? The blessing. I want to make sure you have the grace. Then he says something important. He said, the nature of the grace is this. He says, I want to bless you, but I want to provoke blessing out of me. Someone say provoke blessing. He said, bring me venison and provoke blessing. Why did he say bring venison? Why didn't just bless him? The reason why is this. The way grace and blessing works, they walk in response to honor. So, he says, show that this thing matters to you. How do you show? Bring the venison. Let there be honor. Let there be honor. And listen to me. 
Proverbs 3 verse 9. Can you put on the screen, please? See what the Bible says about honor. The word honor in the Bible means very heavy. That's what the Bible means. It's, it's, it's ka, um, kabah. It means heavy. See what the Bible says. It says, honor the Lord with what? With thy substance. Hey, he says, make me heavy with your substance. Isaac wanted to bless him. He says, put honor. Put honor on it. Why? The grace, grace always flows in direction of honor. Just always remember, grace always flow in the direction of honor. What was the difference between Abel and Cain? Two of them bought offering to God. Do you remember the story? Yes or no? You remember the story? What did God accept his offering? Who? Abel. What happened to Cain's offering? It wasn't accepted. Why? The reason is simple because Bible says Cain brought something. Bible says Abel brought his best. Abel brought his best because in his heart God was heavy. And as he brought his best, God did not have respect to the offering of who? Of who? Of Cain. He respected the offering of Abel. As a matter of fact, God told Cain, he says, if you did well, if you honored me, I will also accept your offering. Listen to me. A lot of people want the flow of grace in their businesses. A lot of people want the flow of grace in their finance. And God is saying, honor me with your finances. This is what Isaac did with his children. He says, I want to bless you. But let it be honor. Look at that verse again. Proverbs 3 verse 9. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and what? With the first fruits of all thy angels. What will happen to you? Verse 10. It says, And so, he says, When you honor me with it, it says, So shall your wine burst with fresh oil. Let me show you what honor is. Where's the scale? Thank you. Put the scale here. Thank you. So this is the kind of offerings. So when you give God this offering, did you see on the scale makes no difference. On the scale makes no difference. I give this offering, then the scale shakes a little. It makes a bit of a difference. And the difference is this. When you give God money, naira, pounds, dollars, God doesn't know the difference. What makes it matter to God? God says, the weight it has on you, on my scale, determines if it's acceptable or not. So, that, that's the weight. A lot of people can tithe and give offering when it's convenient. God says, it means nothing. It's when you have all the pressing needs, and you say, God, this is a tight month, but I take to honor you and put it there. That's when it means something. Did you read that verse again? Chapter 3, verse 9. Let me show what it says. Let me see. It says, honor its weight. Verse 9. See what it says. Honor the Lord with what? Did you know it says, honor the Lord with your substance, not left over. Many people give God their leftover offering. They give God what they call change. That's what they give God. Change. God says, no. I don't collect change. What I collect is substance. Because our given is a reflection of the value we place on him. That's why you can't tell people to give a certain amount. Because that value is different based on each person's capacity. And do you know what happened to Jacob? When Jacob was going through his troubles, he told God. There was no titan at this time. Titan came during Moses. He said, if you will deliver me, I will come back with 10%. You know why? Someone said, why 10%? Because I will come and honor you just to let you know that you were involved in my life. How do you give? Because you want a flow of grace in your life. And grace is very powerful. Do you know there was a time that Laban wanted to cheat Jacob? You know what God Bible says? Bible says, and God appeared to Laban and told Laban, if they born your father, touch him. Laban did not even know God. But because Jacob had made a vow to God that if you bring me back in peace, I will do this for you. Very extremely powerful principle. Extremely powerful principle today. The question is this. When it comes to you, are you able? Do you are you even able to tight as a Christian, or do you tight when it's when it's easy? The other thing, have you learned the principle of honor? I, what kind of giver are you? Are you a Cain giver or an Abel giver? Cain gives anything. Cain gives what is convenient. But if you want a flow of grace, Abel's offering was so powerful. When Abel died, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the blood of Abel was speaking to God out of the ground. Why am I telling you this? There are three components to your financial success. 
Number one, that's grace. Number two, mentality. Number three, skill. It's good to get skill and get mentality, but add grace to it. Let's pray. Can you stand on your feet, everyone?